Well, my name is Steve Fender from Fender's Fish Hatchery. We're located here in, in Ohio. And right now we're sitting, it's the 28th of February. Um, weather's getting nice. Uh, it's acting like spring. You can smell it in the air. And the thing I wanted to talk to you about on this video was what you should be looking for in your pond this time of year. Things you should be doing, being proactive and doing some preventative measure stuff. Um, what you can expect your fish are happening right now is these fish are still your bass, bluegill, perch, crappie, catfish. All these fish are still dormant. The water's cold. Uh, they're not feeding. You know the metabolism is way slow. They even if they do eat, their their bodies are slow. They can't even metabolize the food right. So the good news is they're not using up a lot of body fat right now. Now this year we had a winter, and when I say we had winter, we had ice. We had snow. This is the kind of winter I like to see. I don't particularly like winter. I like a mild winter, it's nice and warm, but I don't like it because I end up with a lot of phone calls in the spring from people having fish die. And the difference between a mild winter and a hard winter is when we have a winter like we had this year, that ice layer and snow makes the water good and cold and dark and it pushes the fish into dormancy very, really well. So they get pushed in that hard, they don't use up a lot of their body fat, they're fully in a dormancy, and they can survive the winter better. Now if we have a mild winter like we had last year, the fish don't get pushed into dormancy real well, they use up a little too much body fat, and they end up getting sick a lot easier, they're just weak. <clears throat> now another thing we've seen different last year, that hopefully you don't see this year, is we got into March, it stayed a little bit normal, but it didn't really warm up. Uh, April was 20 degrees below normal the whole month, and May didn't warm up until almost two weeks before June. Now I looked at the weather map and according to the weather man, if you can believe him, it looks like we're going to have a nice steady incline of temperature every week a little bit warmer. <clears throat> so as our days get longer, the, day, the days get warmer, we're going to steadily warm up. And what that does for the fish is they very slowly come out of dormancy, they start to feed a little bit, they start to metabolize their food, they can stay healthy. Now, thing you want to look for, if you have perch in your pond, if you would catch any perch, 10, 12 inches, 8 inches, it'll look like they've swallowed a softball. They'll be so swelled up if it's a female with eggs. These guys are going to release their eggs here in about another two weeks, three weeks, depending on where you are in the state or in the country and what our temperatures are does, what the weather does, moon phases, all that has a lot to do with that. But these perch are going to lay their eggs, these little guys are going to hatch out and they're going to swim around and grow a little bit and they're going to be about a half inch long when the other fish start coming out of dormancy. If you want to see some reproduction survival in your perch fry, the best thing you can do is brush your pond up, take areas, just make fish habitat. Six feet of depth or less, brush it up, treetops, um, artificial cover, anything to give these guys somewhere to hide. If there's no cover, you can expect not to see any reproduction survival, especially in your ponds that are an acre of water or less. So make some cover for your little, for, little perch to have somewhere to hide. Next thing you're going to want to do is it'll help you on your survival. Stock in two or three thousand minnows, fathead minnows per acre. That equates out to eight to ten, twelve pounds of minnows per acre. And what that does gives your fish another source of food. So rather than feed on a little perch, maybe they'll eat fathead minnows so you'll see some reproduction survival on your perch. Next thing, I get a lot of phone calls in the spring of the year, depending on what kind of weather we have, but I'll get some phone calls from guys that call me and they say that they've got big bluegill that are dying. Sometimes pretty major numbers, sometimes just a few. And then they'll also say it might have a couple bass, a couple perch, a little bit of crappie, but it's mostly bluegill dye. What goes on is we have a bacteria in the water, it's bacterial gill disease, and it'll affect the bluegill mainly. The reason it hits them in the spring of the year is these fish here again are weak from going through a long winter. Their metabolism is low, their immune system is weak because they've used up all their food resources or the food story, fat storage to uh, produce eggs and sperm. So these fish are weak. Once they spawn and they start to feed, typically by the 1st of June I get no more phone calls about bacterial gill disease. It just stops because these fish, have, they're able to feed themselves, they're getting strong, the immune system strong, it's done. Now, real simple way to stop bacterial gill disease. One pound of copper sulfate per surface acre. Mix it up in water, get it dissolved out real good, spread it around the perimeter of the pond, <coughs> And this kills the bad bacteria it stops any more bluegill from dying. And I've actually got customers who do it every year even if they don't see any bluegill dying, just preventative maintenance. Some ponds will never see it, some ponds will see it once, some will see it every year. There's no rhyme or reason to why it happens to certain ponds other than the fact 
how strong the fish are makes a difference how well they can fight this off. So this is something that, and I encourage customers to feed fairly aggressively through the summer months and then hit it with minnows again in the fall, fatten these fish up so they can be stronger when they go in the winter. So you're gonna, those are some, some things you wanna kinda pay attention to. Another thing I get phone calls on, guys that call me and they're all excited, they're concerned that their algae's gonna take over. You need sunlight, water, and nutrients to grow vegetation. And when we get a good layer of snow and ice in the water, that blocks off all sunlight. So if you watch, like the pond behind me here, I got a good layer of ice and it's going to, it's melting away. Now right now there's no algae growing. Now as you give this a couple weeks, that filamentous algae will start to grow. The filamentous algae is that green, slimy, hairy stuff. It may be a real fine hair or coarse hair. There's a lot of different varieties, but it's a filamentous algae that free floats. As soon as that sunlight hits, and the water and nutrients are already there, that algae will start to grow. Now when the water is as cold as it is right now, it'll grow slow, but it will start to grow. So, the grass carp. If you got grass carp in the pond, typically they eat it. And when the water is 50, 55 degrees or less, they're too cold, they won't feed on it. So now the algae is getting ahead of them. So now you get into, say, end of April, the aimers or the grass carp still aren't eating it. And the algae is starting to become pretty noticeable, starting to see patches of it around. So I get phone calls. My customers are all concerned it's going to take over. And I tell them, if the grass carp controlled your algae last year, it would do it again this year. It takes time. Let them warm up. Once the water hits 65, 70 degrees, they'll start to eat on it. The water hits 70 plus, they'll tear into it and they'll hold it back. They'll clean it up for you. So if your aimers made it through the winter and they've done a good job last year, they'll do it again this year. A lot of times I tell my customers, the best thing you can do is just don't look at your pond until, the warm, until it warms up and it'll all go away. So those are things you want to pay attention to. Um, restocking. This time of the year is a good time of the year to restock. If you want to introduce perch or crappie or bass or anything and you want to introduce fingerling fish, now's the time to do it. Your big bass or any of your predator fish are cold. They're dormant. They're laying down the bottom. They're not feeding. And if you got a good well-balanced pond where you got a good predator forage base, lots of little bluegill, you got lots of cover. If you want to try to get perch or crappie or, or anything else or hybrid bluegill and you want to try to get these guys reestablished or get the population built up, now's the time to stock in these little guys. You can stock in a three to four inch fingerling this time of the year and have really good re real good restocking survival because your predator fish are cold. Now, if you try to stock in little fish in June, July, August, any time when the water's warm, those bass are active. They're watching. You walk down to the edge of the water, you might not see them, but they're watching you. So as soon as you walk down to the edge, you release those fish. They're scared. They shoot out in the water. Those, those predators sense that fear, and they strike, and they got them, and they clean them up in no time at all. So you're stocking an expensive bait. But if you do it when the water's cold, like I say right now, 40 degrees, 50, even 60 degrees, you can get away with it. And you do your restocking with your fingerling fish this time of the year and they go into the summer they're starting to feed they mix in with everybody else when the water warms up nobody's the wiser you might lose a couple but your losses are very minimal so and that's a good time to re do your restocks in the spring of the year also so we'll be getting into business here in another couple weeks as the water warms up we get a good inventory in the building typically if you want to come to the fish hatch you pick up fish check with us give us a call Typically by the second week of March, we've got a really good inventory and we're rolling real good. It all depends on the weather. But uh, if you guys got any questions, give me a call. And you can go to our website, uh, Google us at uh, www.fendersfishhatchery.com. You can check out our other videos there. Um, go to our website, got a lot of good information there also, plus the rest of my videos. So hopefully you have a good spring and we look forward to seeing you.